All right. So I wanted to make a video on how I got into the VR League with the intention of encouraging new players to do it as well. So here we go. Um, the, the background video is just this random scrim that I recorded. It was on my computer. I put it up. It might be interesting. I don't know. But anyways, let's hit him with chapter one. Okay, so I was always into video games. I was always interested in competitive esports. You know, like I tried game battles in Call of Duty 4 with my, you know, random friends that I met online when I was a kid. And I was never great because obviously I was too young and I wasn't very serious about it. I just thought like, oh, I, I'm pretty good at, you know, team deathmatch so I can absolutely become a pro. Like, I don't know. I, I tried, but I didn't really try. But I did always watch, you know, esports streams like League of Legends and CSGO, all of that. So it was definitely an area of interest for me. And also with VR, I was considering being a Kickstarter backer because, you know, I was super into that when all of it came out. But I was too young and too poor. Like I, I could have tried to convince my parents, but there's no way they're going to back something like that. So just to provide context, I was very interested in VR. Um, fast forward to my first year of university, my IRL friend, David, known as Sealable Bag, was talking to me in the cafeteria at school. And he mentions how he needs to take time off from his classes. And, you know, he's got to defer his exams because he's being flown out to California to Oculus Connect 4 to compete in North American regionals for a game called Echo Arena. And he was saying, like, his flight's paid for, his hotel's paid for. I was like, nah, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're, you're, you're lying. Like, I literally didn't believe him. So he, he showed me videos of the game. He, uh, he showed me pretty much, like, proof he was going. And just those videos, just the clips of the game he showed me, like, I fell in love with this game immediately. And I was already on the fence about VR. So the decision was easy. Right there in the cafeteria after he told me, I opened up my phone and I, I went and bought computer upgrades and an Oculus Rift. I spent my entire savings and student loans just on my phone. Amazon, let's go. <laughs> so uh, fast forward once again to when I received my headset and eagerly logged in to Echo Arena for the first time. Since this is about the VR League, I won't mention my amazement with the technology, but it was there. Uh, anyways, I was lucky enough to have a friend who was on a top team and an amazing player to teach me how to play at an accelerated pace over, you know, other new players. He taught me some advanced tips and tricks right off the bat, and I focused on perfecting them. Uh, over the next month or so, I played the game nonstop, solo or not, and reached the max level of 50. And the whole time, I was, I was focusing on the idea that I need to get good enough to play an ESL. So I was on the search for an ESL team. Um, since season one was more than halfway through at this point, I knew I couldn't qualify for LAN regardless, even with the team, but I wanted the practice. I wanted to, you know, round myself out as a player. So that brings us to chapter two. Um, so I was in the lobby talking with Sealable Bag and other players about ESL, and there was a player who was in need of a couple of teammates after regionals had passed uh, named Billyisms. First off, Billy is the man. Uh, he took me under his wing and we had some of the most fun I've ever had playing this game to the, to this day. Uh, our third player was Ainan TBH, who is a talented player and practiced with us regularly. And since I was so new, the idea of practicing regularly and coming up with plays and, and stuff was new as well, but we went with it full force. Um, I think that's a point that's got to be focused on. We knew we couldn't qualify for LAN. We knew we weren't the best team but we practiced like we were just for the sake of getting better. Uh, fun fact, throughout season one, my inexperienced team actually took a game off of future world champions eclipse, which I, I believe we were the, we were one of the only two or only three teams to ever take a game off them during, during season one. And I credit that win completely to our practice. Like we were a happy go lucky, have fun, you know, do do stupid things in game like just have fun team but we took we took esl serious and season one was integral to my growth as a player but it left me craving more um towards the end Ina and tbh didn't practice really with us he only played with us on sunday we would always need subs for practice 
And Billy mentioned he just wanted to have fun, you know, the, the serious aspect, getting too into it and, you know, getting upset when you lose and all that. He, he just didn't care. He just he, he wanted to he just wanted to have fun. That was his only goal with the game. And I understood that. But I did after, you know, that I had it in my mind that I was looking for another team, which brings us to season two. Um, so sometime before season two was announced, the ESL community manager said, basically, hint, hint, get your teams figured out, hint, hint, you know, saying season three was going to, or se- sorry, season two is going to start soon. Uh, this prompted a message from Speedy V, a player who is on a top team for season one, to message and ask if I would want to join him and Fair Enough, another top player. And to be honest, getting this message inflated my ego an absolute ton because I thought there was no way I was on par with these players and they were asking me. Like, I knew that I was getting better, but I didn't think I was, you know, I'd, I still didn't think I was ESL ready quite yet. But of course, after an ESL Cup, I told my current team that I would be leaving, and I did try other teams as well, just to keep my options open, but the team that felt the best was with Speedy and Fair Enough, which evolved into the team Metamerks. Uh, We took Season 2 incredibly seriously, practicing three days a week, playing every Sunday, even with me working six days a week and 12 hours or more a day. Uh, it didn't feel difficult though. I wasn't physically like physically sure I was exhausted, but it wasn't like, Oh man, I gotta, I gotta go practice now. It was, it wasn't work to me. It was my dream pretty much. I just wanted to get to a LAN and defeat eclipse. Those were my two main goals. Uh, so I put the work in with help from the fact that I had a very deep rooted passion for this game and the esports side of it. Uh, it was a hard season, but my team proved that we could contend with the best. We ended up getting invited to the Leicester Invitational, which was in the UK. That was my first LAN. And we also miraculously qualified as one of the top two NA teams to go to World Finals at Oculus Connect 5 in California through basically just sheer hard work. And we we earned it. Um, During Season 2, I realized that I wanted to play with my IRL friend who introduced me to the game, Sealable Bag. My decision on this was made up even before we played in World Finals, even before we qualified for World Finals. I knew that Season 3, I was going to play with him. Uh, We just didn't know who our third player would be. Uh, Sealable wanted Loveridge, and to be honest, I wanted Loveridge too, as they used to be teammates, but nobody was dead set on any decision except that Seal and I would play together. Anyways, Loveridge decided to play with us, and that that brings us to Season 3. Okay, so Season 3 started sometime after Season 2, with most teams taking a lot of time off, but Loveridge, Seal, and I weren't one of those teams. I think we took a week off and got right into practicing alone in a private arena and also scrimming the other teams who were uh, eager for Season 3 to start. Um, We came up with new plays. We went and named every single block so our team would be on the same page because, you know, every team has different names for the blocks. Uh, We figured out our team dynamic. We did a lot of... A lot of just uh, communication practice, like how we communicate. We learned where each other would be without necessarily calling it. Just, you know, getting that synergy going. Um, we also decided to compete in Echo Combat, which would split our practice time. But we did really focus on Arena. We did a little bit of combat, but to be honest, we didn't, we didn't focus on it whatsoever. But we did practice a lot. Every night that we had scrims, we would get on a half hour early just to boost the round, shoot at the goal, talk about strategy. And we still do this, you know. We think it's very important that you you set a scrim block. You can't just, you know, it's like uh, in basketball, in, in high school even. You would have practice days and you would have game days. You, you couldn't become the best team just by having game days. It's not That's not how it works. Um, anyways... I thought season two was a lot of practice, but we went like full send in season three. Um, Fast forward a lot, and we ended up qualifying to go to world finals for both Echo Combat and Echo Arena, which is absolutely insane to me. Um, But again, drilling down the point that we worked for it every single week and earned it when it came down to playing qualification. Um, Our team, to be honest, like we're always having fun. We absolutely have been tilted before. We've been snarky with each other, but we know like 
we play our best when we're having fun and we're making jokes. Like if we get scored on and we're making jokes, that's like the best thing ever. If we make mistakes and we're making jokes, that's the best thing ever because we don't get tilted. We just come right back up and we fix that mistake next time, right? And and so in addition to hard work, you need to you need to be level-headed. You need to know, you know, like as a conclusion, you need to if you get tilted easily, you will lose important games. If you're able to laugh and joke with your team, regardless of the situation, regardless of the scoreline, then you have a massive advantage. That's just the fact. Um, if you want to get into VR esports at all, you need to love the game you play, regardless of what it is. I think that's very important because, you know, the VR League has a ton of different games. And it, it, you don't want to play a game that's like, oh, well, that game has the lowest population, so it's probably easiest. Like, no, that's not how it, how it works, man. You need to... You need to love the game so that when it's time to go practice, you're not dreading it. Like you need to want to do that. Like, you know, when my team has scrims, scrims scheduled to go scrim a team and that team cancels, we're like, no, like I wanted to play so bad. And then we'll still go in just alone in a, alone in a private arena, just, you know, practicing because that's all we got to do. Right. And that's what we want to do. Um, also, Another thing that I know will uh, help new players, if you don't think you're good enough, you need to be practicing with a goal in mind to get better. That was my mindset. I was always just playing to get better, and I still am. I don't, I don't play just to, you know, like it started out to play, like, I don't know how to explain it well without sounding kind of toxic, but when I first started playing this game, it was fun, and I loved it. But I wasn't just logging into the game to be like, oh, I'm just going to relax and have fun. Like when I logged into the game, I was like, let's crush some people. Like, let's be the best. Like, um, yeah, but all in all, that's my story. Uh, that's how you get into the VR League. You just need to find a team, play for fun, play to win if that's your goal, play to get better. And uh, I hope this encourages more people to join our community. Um, thanks for watching.